Hey guys, welcome to Wealth Talk. I'm Rob Luna and we have a super special edition. Happy New Year 2021 edition of Wealth Talk. I haven't seen this much going on in the market in several, several years. There's so many things to talk about. Get a paper ready, get your pen ready and start taking some notes because we're going to give you information that you need to make sure you're getting yourself and your portfolio prepared for 2021. <music> So wow, what a week it's been. Uh, obviously, coming out of a couple of days ago, we saw uh, the turmoil that was going on in Capitol Hill. Thankfully, it looks like that a lot of that has been taken care of. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that. What I am going to talk about is some of the significant issues that we've seen occur. Uh, in particular, we're going to talk about the Senate runoff race in Georgia, which is where we've seen the Senate flip. Uh, from majority that the Republicans had to now a tie, 50 on the uh, Senate side to the Republicans, 50 to the Democrats. What that means now is the Biden agenda more than likely is going to be a lot easier to pass because that tie-breaking vote is going to come down to the Vice President uh, Kamala Harris. So more than likely, a lot of the things that Biden will like to get done in the first couple of years are going to be a lot easier for him now. So we want to talk about how this impacts you, what shifts you might want to make, and how the market is perceiving all this. So I think what's most important, I tell our clients at my wealth management firm all the time, and I tell it to myself all the time, your opinion does not matter. What matters is where money is flowing, where the market is going, and that's going to dictate in a large part what you should be doing to make sure that you're protecting your portfolio, but also positioning it for success. Now, a lot of people thought that if Biden were to get that Georgia Senate uh, race in his favor, that the market was going to be in for a lot of trouble. More than likely, the oversimplistic theme that everybody was thinking is that taxes would be going up and a higher percentage of taxes, corporate taxes, personal income taxes would be a wet blanket for the market, would be a wet blanket for the economy. So they thought had that happened, the market would be selling off. However, uh, as we approach Friday now, we're seeing that the S&P since the election has actually rallied uh, up about 3% so far for the week. So for some reason, the market actually likes what's going on. So I want to break down why that may be the case, why this is going against consensus, and give you some reasoning behind what the moves are, what we're doing for our clients at our firm and things you, you need to start thinking about now. So first and foremost, well, why is the stock market going up if taxes are going to be going up? Well, it's a very complex question and it's a very multifaceted uh, question because taxes in particular, there's several types of taxes. Let's first start with the corporate tax. So as you can remember, the corporate tax prior uh, to the Trump administration was at 35%. That got taken down with Trump coming into office to 21%, which was a huge boost to corporations. So now what we're hearing from the Biden administration, if there is going to be an increase in taxes on the corporate side, it would not go back to that previous high level of 35% it would more than likely go to 28% if that happens. And also let's remember the effective rate, the rate that corporations are actually paying usually was nowhere near that because there's deductions and other things that take that down. So that doesn't put us back in the position we were before. And even with that level of 35%, we saw that corporations were extremely profitable. So I'll say the corporate income tax is not really a huge issue. Uh, and the market's taking it that way as well. When you look at the personal income tax rate, what we're talking about on that is on the highest bracket, potentially going from 37 to 39.6%. Again, another 2.6% does not really scare the market that much. Uh, what I would say is one of the biggest issues in terms of taxes that we're hearing out there right now is a potential increase to the capital gains tax rate that potentially almost doubling from 20 to almost 40%. So let's talk about that a little bit. What are capital gains rates? Well, capital gains rates are when you buy a technology stock, when you buy a piece of real estate, when you buy any stock, for example, 
if you hold that for 12 months, you get a favorable capital gains rate. So instead of paying your ordinary income bracket, which we said was about 40% for high income earners, you're paying a 20% flat rate. Well, what the Biden administration is talking about for people only making a million dollars and above that that rate would potentially go uh, up to essentially what the ordinary income rate is. So for about 20 to 40, and that's a big deal. Um, where I really have an issue with that personally is, well, when you buy Amazon stock and you sell it, you buy it for half a million, sell it for a million. If you have to pay capital gains tax on that, obviously you don't wanna pay that higher rate. But to me, that passive approach is much different than if someone starts a business, someone starts a bakery, they put all their hard earned money into it. They build that bakery up for 10, 15 years, and then they sell that bakery for a million or $2 million profit they also would be penalized by that higher rate and that hard work that they put into that business would also be taxed at that 40% rate, which to a lot of people does not make a lot of sense, uh, including myself to a lot of people that's not fair. So it's really differentiating between those two. Now let's talk about all of these taxes and the potential that they actually pass and go through. One thing that the Wall Street Journal is reporting that New York Senator Schumer, Chuck Schumer, more than likely would lead the Senate. Senate, uh, we have a lot of background on Senator Schumer. One thing he's talking about first and foremost, right away that they wanna get passed is taking that stimulus bill from 600 to $2,000, putting a lot more money into the economy, putting a lot more money into consumers' hands which would be a huge, huge boost to the economy. That's one of the reasons that we're seeing things tick up today. Also, what he is talking about, very, very important, especially if you're in states like New York, where Schumer is from, if you're in from states like California, where I'm from, where we have extremely high state income taxes, he is talking about rolling back that salt tax limitation of $10,000. Remember, if you're in California right now, you're paying high state income taxes, you're paying property taxes. There is a cap on that there that was put in from the Trump administration at $10,000. If you buy a million dollar house in California, which is you know not a very, very expensive home, you're paying $10,000 in property taxes, which means all the money that you're paying to the state in state income taxes is now not deductible, where before you were actually able to deduct that. So a lot of people, when you look at the corporate side on the Trump plan, uh, we saw corporations benefit, but a lot of people, and I can tell you myself, actually wound up paying more taxes under the Trump administration than they were under the Obama administration because of that salt tax limitation. Schumer is actually talking about rolling that back. Why is California important? Well, if it was an economy, it's $3.1 trillion economy, it would be the fifth largest in the world if California was its own country. So if you actually make taxes more favorable with that for Californians, that again is a very big boost to the economy. So what's happening is when you really start breaking this down, it doesn't sound nearly as scary as what a lot of people were thinking. Also, when you start talking about this stimulus, one thing I was looking at before getting on here in 2020, we had 11.6% increase of cash in circulation into the economy, the largest increase that we've seen since World War II. We're now talking about even a larger stimulus that be could coming in 2021, so we could see those numbers increase even more. One thing I've been talking about to our clients at my firm for several, several years now, since the recession in 2008, why we really didn't get that boom goes back to your basic economics class. In order for inflation to happen, you need two things. Number one, you need supply. So you need what the Federal Reserve has done to make monetary policy extremely accommodating, pushing a lot of money into the system, which essentially first goes to the banking system. But then most importantly, to get inflation, what you need is something called velocity. So once that supply comes in, that actually needs to get out into the hands of consumers to spend. And once that happens, you have to look out for things like inflation. So we're now starting to see velocity for the first time in a long time of the dollar picking up. So what does that mean? Well, first of all, it's putting a lot of pressure on the dollar. 
Uh, a lot of people are starting now actually be a little bit more concerned about inflation. So you talk about some of these things like cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, for example, hitting over $40,000 a coin. Now the cryptocurrency uh, market actually getting just past $1 trillion, uh, which is about 1% of what this total stock market capitalization is at $100 trillion, people are starting to take notice. So you're wondering, well, why are they doing that? Well, as we print, uh, governments across the world print more and more money, there becomes a lack of confidence in fiat currencies. So people want to be tied to something more tangible. Remember, we got off the gold standard a long time ago in the U.S., so a lot of people have been using gold for a very long time to hedge their portfolios. Well, now cryptocurrencies are being looked at as another way to be able to do that. So people have put money there. Well, let's think about that also. When you think about companies, companies are constantly producing new revenue. They're not sitting there with all their money in cash. Amazon, if you look at companies like Sherman Williams, who has paint supplies, chemicals, property, these are tangible companies. There's a, you know, a lot of people out there to say don't invest in stocks because they're pieces of paper. There's nothing further from the truth there. Stocks are one of the best assets to own in a time of rising inflation because they're able to pass on prices to consumers as the dollar declines. These are companies that are constantly growing top line. Investing in a piece of paper, yeah, you obviously don't wanna have a dollar bill, but a stock certificate that makes you an owner of a real life corporation does very well, especially certain types of companies in a rising inflationary environment. We're seeing uh, companies like Chevron tick up because now what we're talking about also with this new administration, companies like Caterpillar, what is the other thing that could be a huge catalyst, huge boom, and now with the Senate shifting and distributing that power over to the Democratic side, we've already heard President Biden talking about an infrastructure bill. And if you remember, the infrastructure bill really has been one of those issues. I'm surprised they haven't been able to pass it because both sides have been relatively supportive of an infrastructure bill. Well, now if he's coming in talking about that, he's got the Senate and the House on his side to be able to pass that. There's a very good chance that we might for the first time in a long time see an infrastructure spending bill, which is going to create jobs, which is going to push more money into the economy. So when you really, again, sit back and think about this, if the dollar is under pressure and people want to own things that keep up with the rising, uh, with the with a, uh, a rising amount of inflation, you do not want to be just sitting there with cash in your mattress. You don't want to be sitting there with cash in the bank. It's not paying very much right now. It's probably one of the worst things that you can do. People would rather own stocks. They'd rather own real estate. They'd rather own gold. We're saying they'd rather own currencies. So that's what we're seeing a race. And if the economy is going to be supported by low interest rates through the next year or two years, by money being pushed into the consumer's pockets from our government, in some cases, like potentially in the state of California, maybe there actually being some more money due to a reworking of the tax policy. And let's remember, coming out of this pandemic, we're now starting to get some traction on rolling out that vaccine all this money in the economy, the fact that the dollar is under, the pre under pressure, there is going to be a continued race to invest in high quality assets. And we're seeing some of the stock market that we haven't seen move in a real long time, like the financial stock starting to catch a bid now, as we see bond rates tick back over 1%, the industrial companies that have been left for dead with the potential of a, a infrastructure bill, same with energy, there's a lot of actual catalyst that makes sense why this stock market is going up based off of that one, you know, somewhat older thread of, okay, if Biden gets in, taxes go up and the world's over. The market is looking past that. We're digging down deep, looking at some of the potential winners, looking at some of the other things that might be on the fringe in terms of benefits, figuring out where the winners are in this market. We're reflecting that just like we did last year with our clients. We did not know the pandemic was going to hit, hit in Q1. But once that happened, we took inventory and realized, okay, we needed a pivot. We needed a pivot shift to some of those names, like the work at home names. Well, it's the same thing now. The landscape is being laid out. It's starting to become a lot more 
clear who the winners or the losers are going to be. It's becoming painfully obvious. You don't want to just be sitting in cash. You want to do something. Now's the time to understand where that hockey puck is going, like Wayne Gretzky would say. Start skating there because this could be a great, great stock market, great, great economy for the winners. Obviously, there'll be some losers, and you want to make sure that you're not investing in those. But in summary, that's what's going on right now. We'll continue to talk about this over the coming weeks. Stay tuned for that. But if you're wondering why the stock market's going up, that should hopefully give you a little bit more insight why and give you, you know, just another opinion of why you might want to think twice about putting that cash under your mattress. That's it for all for now. Thanks for watching this week's Wealth Talk edition. If you are not subscribed, please click that link below. I put this information out every week to keep you informed of what's going on with the market. Happy New Year. We'll talk to you next week.